in today's video, as you can see, we are going to be going, going over the relationship between men, momentum and force. And we're going to start off, of course, with the force and the momentum equation. Then we're going to show you the relationship between the force and the momentum. For force, we like to start off with Newton's second law, F equals MA, and momentum. Momentum equation is P. P is for momentum, and that is equal to the mass times the velocity. So Newton's second law says that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And momentum equation says that momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. Now these two equations, I like to say, are related to each other through the acceleration. Because the acceleration is equal to the change in the velocity over the change in time. And you can see I can just take the acceleration out of this equation and substitute in change in velocity for change in time. And we get that the force applied is equal to the mass times the change in velocity divided by the change in the time. Now you might also notice here this is mass times change in velocity, and that's what we have here. The momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. Well, if we want to change the momentum, we can change the velocity. So that means that the mass times the change in velocity is actually the change in momentum, and this is the equation that the force is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. So when we change something's momentum over time, we have to apply a force to do that. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to calculate in a couple problems here how much force is applied to change the momentum or to change the velocity of an object. And this is the first problem we have. We have a professional tennis player here. The professional tennis player is serving. And here's our equation. So we have the force equal to the change in momentum or change in time. And that means that the force is equal to the momentum final minus the momentum initial divided by the change in time. And we can spread that out again and say the force is equal to mass times velocity final minus mass times initial velocity. And then we can divide that by the time. So what happens now when we serve a tennis ball? Well, the tennis ball has a mass about 60 grams. We're going to convert that to kilograms. That's zero 0 0.06 kilograms, then the initial velocity, now the tennis player is obviously throwing the ball up in the air, but he's basically serving the ball or hitting the ball in a horizontal direction. And the horizontal velocity, the initial velocity in the horizontal direction, I think we can just say is zero because he kind of throws the ball straight up for the most part. And then the final velocity, now when he serves, I think a good serve Probably a fast serve is considered 120 miles per hour. And we're going to convert that into meters per second, and we get that's 55 meters per second. The mass must be in kilograms. The velocity has to be in meters per second. Okay, now the question is the time. How much time for how long is the racket in contact with the ball? I looked up some stuff, and I chose three thousandths of a second, 0 0.003 seconds. And now we can calculate the force because the initial velocity we said is zero. So that means that this term, the mass times the initial velocity is going to be zero. And that just tells us now that the force applied to the ball is equal to the mass times the final velocity divided by the change in the time because the ball starts at rest. So we can substitute those values in. We get the force is equal to the mass, which is 0 0.06 kilograms, times the final velocity, 55 meters per second, divided by the change in time. And you get that the force applied to the ball over that time is 1,100 newtons. Okay, that's a considerable force. That's about 247 pounds of force. All right, so that is the force applied to the tennis ball when the tennis player serves the tennis ball. Now we can do the same thing for this little guy who is going to hit a 95 mile per hour fastball. Well, a 95 mile per hour fastball is traveling at about 42 meters per second. So this is the pitched velocity of the ball, and I chose the, this direction, I suppose, to the left towards the player to be the positive. And then when he hits the ball, he's gonna hit it at 78 miles per hour. And we gotta remember that's going in the opposite direction. That would be minus 35 meters per second, and the ball has a mass of 145 grams. That's the mass of a major league regulation baseball, which is 0 
0.145 kilograms. And again, the time, now this one I chose because I think the objects are a little harder and doesn't deform as much. The time I chose one one thousandth or 0 0.001 seconds. And now we can calculate using our equation the change in the, well, not the change, but the force applied to the baseball. Now in this case, once again, it's the final momentum minus the initial. The velocities, neither of them are zero. So therefore, we can say that when we plug the values in, we get that the mass in the baseball, 0 0.145 kilograms, times the final velocity. Now, the final is when he hits it, okay? That's minus 35 meters per second minus 0 0.145 kilograms, because that's the mass again, times the initial velocity. We chose the pitch to velocity to be the initial velocity. That's in the positive direction. So that's 0 0.145 kilograms times 45. Just put a positive in there for emphasis, because that's positive and that's negative. Divided by the change in time is 0 0.001 seconds. And if you do that math, multiply those, this is a minus term, minus this term, so that's kind of like a minus a minus, divided by one one thousandth, and you get that the force applied to the ball when the pitcher throws the ball, a 95 mile hour fastball, the ball is hit at that velocity, and the force therefore applied to the ball is minus 11,165 Newton. That's a lot of force. It's negative because the force applied is in the negative direction, which is kind of the way the ball is being hit, the direction the ball is being hit, which is away from the player, uh, away from the batter, and that is the amount of force that is applied to a baseball. Okay, so there you go. We did a little bit of introduction into the relationship and how we derived the equation, this equation that the force is equal to the change in momentum over the change in time. We did a couple examples calculating the force applied to an object when its velocity is changed. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things, I believe. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section for this video. Give me a thumbs up, and don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.